James Blunis, this wine is X. This is the Anarchist. This is a Grenache Blanc Paso Robles 2017 vintage wine. Stay tuned and I'll tell you about this beautiful wine. Gorgeous wine here. And uh, so this is a producer called Anarchist. And I'll just explain, you know, where I was. I was in uh, Vista Colina, which is a resort, and it's uh, south of the town of Napa itself. It's right across from the Meritage Hotel. And there are about seven tasting rooms there. Now, I always say, like, if you don't have a lot of time in a specific area, this might be a place to go to. So especially in this very difficult, hard times of 2020, and visiting places is not like it used to be but you can kind of feel a sense of normality when you go here. So I didn't need a reservation to any of the producers I was tasting from. So each of the tasting rooms had their own outdoor seating, and uh, I think maybe one or two did not, but most of them did. There's also a common place where you can sit down, a lot of social distancing, there's music on Sundays, and so for me it was my opportunity to feel like, okay, close to normal. So what people would do is they'd go into a particular producer, they'd bring out the bottle with their own plastic uh, glasses, or sometimes I think they might've brought their own glasses, and you know, I think normalcy is really important. Also on another, you know, particular visit, I was gonna go to another winery. So I was with a friend running a little bit behind and told, uh, you know, five, 10 minutes behind schedule. And they were like, no, we can't take you any longer. And you know, this is the world we live in today. And I get that it's stressful. It's not easy hosting people in this period of time. And yet it was, you know, I was disappointed. So when we were able to come to Vista Colina, the sense of normalcy fit in, especially for Napa, and I felt good about it. I felt, ah, oh, okay, I feel welcomed. Now, the other producer who was not rather welcoming and not very, you know, accommodating, sure, you know, it's not like being half an hour late or missing half of your appointment. In fact, you know, they, it wasn't really an appointment. It was just something to come by for a tasting, but they required one hour, which is kind of a long period of time. And I've explained that I tasted their wines, I know their wines really well, I just wanted to visit and uh, just couldn't happen. So I think there's a lot of that going on. Uh, talking to other people, I get that sense. So here we go. Now the Anarchist, uh, beautiful artwork here. I like this because it's, you know, a uh, very modern art piece. So it's kind of counterintuitive to see this really nice A. It's a wraparound label. It's a 13.7% ABV wine, which makes me happy. So when I'm tasting a lot of Grenache Blanc, I'm tasting in the 14 and a half range and above. And to me to get something down, you know, dialed down by even you know half a point or one point is really nice. So of course a Pinot Blanc from Mendocino County, Pinot Gris. They have a skin fermented white wine, which is mainly Pinot Blanc. They have a Cabernet Sauvignon and a Syrah based wine. And they also have another program called the Foundry. So there's two levels of wines, the Anarchist and also the Foundry wines. Now most of their wines have names, like one of them is Rosé Against the Machine, 15 Minutes of Fame, Conspiracy Theory, and so it was a really you know fun uh, way that they refer to their wines, and I think it's a really nice thing. So you know I, I like to go to these tasting rooms where you're tasting small independent producers. You're tasting producers that uh, you know in the downtown Napa area you can do that as well, and in a small area like this it's nice to have them all right next to each other and to experience that. So if you're you know wanting to taste you know those familiar brands, definitely taste them. But you know, go out of your comfort zone, if it is a comfort zone, to taste wines and small producers. So here we go with this wine. Now, first of all, I don't have any vinification notes because I always read those out if I have them. So um, you know, that's something I try to do to educate people on that experience. So I'll put a map right here, Vista Colina. And again, it's right across the street from the Meritage Hotel. And then it's right near the very famous statue, which is the Grape Crusher. And it's so funny because I've only seen that from the front end as on the highway when I'm zooming by. And so it's nice to actually see it at a slower pace. So here we go with this wine. First, the scent characterization. So this is, uh, you know, really gorgeous notes of orange peel, a bit of citrus pulp, moist stones, and uh, jasmine. Outstanding. Next, the palette characterization. On this citrus peel, citrus pulp, a bit of fennel notation and crushed moist stones. So again, salinity notations coming through. It's a really beautiful wine, 93 points out of 100 points. I'll put more information on the producer down below. Questions and comments you can list there, and that's where the like button is. So if you like this video, please give a like, and also subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. And if you have, grazie, thank you so much. And uh, between videos, you'll find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and WordPress. My podcasts are on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Sante.